Good evening and welcome to Shea Show Real Talk, February the 2nd, 2021. Yes, we are in a new year again. Who would have ever thought? I mean, back in the 70s, if you had told me that we'll still be here in the year 2000, I was like, no, nah, man, this day, everybody's going to be gone. I look at this year, this is 2021. And I tell you what's not changing. And forgive me because I'm a, you know me, I'm going to probably be all over the fucking place tonight. But it just, but one thing just hits my mind. And it's these young kids. And I talk about this shit all the time. I really do. I just don't get it. Where are they going wrong? Well, we in most cases we know where where it's going wrong, and we know it starts at home. We get that, but I tell you, it has to be. We have to find a solution quick. Changing laws or or something because these kids is not all of them. But a, a good portion of them, they just lost their fucking mind. I'm seeing on the, the uh, on the news. I forgot when this was, and this is actually somebody, the, a friend of mine, one of her friends that she knows. I just happened to see her Facebook post, and then I seen it on like on the news. A 15 and a 16 year old, a boy and a girl. 15 and 16 killed uh, a, a, a ride share driver. Was they like Uber or something like that? This guy was like 60 years old. And they, they, they beat him. I guess, you know, when you call like an Uber and you go to a house, you know, and you can, you're going to pick these people up. You don't know who the fuck you're picking up. You just don't. And he went to go pick this 15 and 16 year old up and, and they beat him and they killed him and they, they, sta they stabbed him to death. And I'm thinking like 15 years old, 16, what's, I couldn't even imagine doing it. I mean, when I was 15 years old, 16, listen. I'm just gonna keep it straight up with you as an early. I mean, my, I'm a, I'm a boy. My mind was constantly on the poo nanny. I mean, I'm just gonna tell you, I wasn't thinking about robbing no damn body and killing nobody for what? For what? I'm, I'm being a typical 14, 15 year old kid. What we do? But but kids now at, at that age, it's, it's not typical. This is this is like almost a fucking norm. And that makes no sense. Daryl used to be a, uh, you know, a story was coming. Daryl used to be an Uber driver too. He just, not because he really need the money and all shit like that. Daryl has this problem where he can't sleep. He sleeps, sometimes he sleeps, the, he used to sleep through the day a lot. And, it keep, and he stay up all night. He can't, for whatever reason, he just find it hard to sleep at night. So what he did to, to keep yourself going, he said, well, you know, I can't sleep. I'm going to turn my Uber app on and I'm just going to fucking Uber, you know. And I, and, and I just, to me, I'm sorry. I think that is the most dangerous shit. And I was talking to him one day. We might, one, I tell you what, we was riding one day. It was like, it was dark already. It was like 8 o'clock. And I forgot what area it was in. He said, you know, this is like prime time in this area right here. If I turn the app on, watch, watch it light up. Watch it light up. And I bet you I'll get a I'll get a hit like within seconds of me turning this app on. I said, all right. And so he turned it on. Beep, 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 and there go Boogie. He said, oh, we're only like five minutes away from there. He said, so I'll accept it. I said, well, man, wait, wait man, that's, I'm, am I supposed to be in the car with you? He said, no, not really, but you here already. I want you to see how this works. You might want to do this. I said, shit, I ain't know I ain't going to do this. I don't like people like that. Nothing, a stranger just get in my car and shit. Like, Come on, where you going? Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, I love people, but damn. And so we go pick up Pookie. And 
I'm watching this whole thing just just take place. He get in the car, and the girl say, "Hi, how are you doing?" The guys say, "Yeah, I'm doing all right. You know, yeah, okay." And they, because they already got the coordinates where they're going to take this person to, and so I'm trying to see it's going to be some type of interaction. I ain't saying shit. I'm just like so. The girl says, "How you today?" Ah, man, it's all right, man. Just got off work, man. I want Pookie them, you know, blah 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 blah. So oh, okay, you know, just general shit, and that was it. And he dropped them off. He said, see, that wasn't nothing. I said, man, that was scary as shit. I said, somebody sitting behind you that you don't fucking know, and it's dark. I mean, how do you know who these people are supposed to be? He said, well, it tells me I'm picking up Pookie. Or it tells me I'm picking up uh, Chiquacqua. I said, all right. And so we're getting ready to head back towards the office. It's, it's a little late. It's dark. And this thing goes off again. And he said, well, let me go ahead and take this last one. Just ride with me. I said, oh, man, this is like freaking me out, bro. And so it was like, and it was out, and the guy was going out to Southwest Detroit. We had to go out to Southwest Detroit. And we pulling up. And he said, see, it's going to be um, Wanda, some shit like that. It says the person's name. And we pulling down the street. Remember, it's dark. Under street light, it's like, Five pookies, maybe six of them. Was it six of them motherfuckers sitting out there? Five or six guys just sitting out there in front of the house where he had to go. Now I'm getting, now I'm really getting worried. I said, dude, <laughs> you know me. I said, this is a fucking setup, dog. This is a setup. He said, man, shut up, man. It's all right, man. It's, 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 it's good. Just don't be all getting like that. I said, man, shit is a setup, man. Pull off, man. Pull off. Fuck this. He said, man, you couldn't be no Uber driver. I said, yeah, what I've been trying to tell you. I said, man, this don't look right. And so a couple guys started walking towards the car. I said, oh, my God, here it is. We about to get fucking jacked. Oh, my God. And the day is fucking Thursday night. I got shit to do tomorrow. I'm sitting all kinds of shit going through my mind. So Daryl cracked the window and said, I'm looking for Wanda. He said, yeah, that's me. And I said, I told Daryl, see, well, you just said, you, you just said, that it's supposed to be Wanda. That that ain't Wanda. Daryl said, What's for? I thought I was picking up a, a, a lady. The guy said, Oh, that's my aunt. It's her Uber app, and she just she ordered it for me. Ah, all right, man. And I'm sitting here thinking, Well, Pookie them out here leaning on some cars. So he was with them. So how come his friends, my mind is going. Why can't his friends take him where he needs to go? Why why are we here? So I'm thinking he get in the car, right? And I'm I'm nudging the girl like what the fuck, you know, be careful, man. The motherfuckers might be wanting to follow us and shit. I said, just hit a couple of corners and turn right and turn right. Just keep just turning and shit. If they keep turning after the second thing and shit, this I mean, just, just dump the mother out here, go to the police station or something. He said, Man, calm down. Because he had the music on and shit. The old boy had some headphones on and shit. Listen to whatever the fuck he listened to back there. I was like nervous. Because I thought his boys were going to get in the car and follow us. So they did get in the car. And when we pulled off, they pulled off. I said, oh, that's it. And I said, oh, make it right. Make it right right here. He made it right. They made it right. Then I said, make it a, a, a sharp left here. And then right on this corner here. And they went another way. And so I said, okay, maybe they're not following. But at that point, I told Daryl, like, like, fucking step on it. Wherever the hell you're going, step on it just in case they want to get back with us. And, you know, I can't do that. That's dangerous. That's dangerous. And like I said, it does start at home. I'm not going to even, it does, I say this all the time. It's these parents, for the most part, want to be, um, you guys know people like this, want to be friends with their fucking kids. I don't, I never understood that. You know, you got to be a parent. It's okay to to be friendly with your kid, I guess, to a certain extent. You know, just, you know, but, you know, but you got to let them know who, you know, because kids will get out of hand sometimes. They'll test you. They will. They'll fucking test you and shit. You sitting there bullshit with them and joking with them and shit, and that's going to be the time where they're going to fucking test you when your guards is down because you're bullshitting with them and you're not really catching what they're saying. You know, and that shit persists. Next thing you know, it's a problem because now you, when you when you see it starting to materialize, you want to put a check on it. Well, fuck, it's too late. You let Pookie get away with that shit for a minute. 
And he gone. He gonna do what he wanna do. He gonna talk the way he wanna talk. And I see that with kids all the fucking time. It's just, it's sad. My mother didn't play that shit. My mother had boys. Nothing but fucking boys. And let me tell you, she didn't... The kids now, go in the, dark, go in the market. Go in the market right now and you'll see um, Pookie want the G.I. Joe with the Kung Fu grip. He's just fucking crying because his mama won't get him the fucking Fruity Pebbles and shit. She don't want him to have that shit. But he's going to sit there and just whine and just like throw a fucking fit into... She throw them fucking Fruity Pebbles in the fucking uh, basket. Well, let me tell you what Evelyn did. That's my mother. My mother was like, she pre-warned us before we got to where the hell we was going. We had two major um, stores back in the day, A&P and Farmer Jack's. Now, A&P used to be on Livernois. I'm, I'm sorry, I take that back. Oh, my God. It was on Davidson. If you're from Detroit, you know this. If you're old school like me. It was on Davidson right before you get to Linwood. It's right now. It's a, a big, it's a wig shop. It's like one of those Chinese places where they, you know, you know, sell weave and all that old shit. Well, that used to be the A and P back in the day. So we pull up in the, we pull up in the in the parking lot. My mother just her seat. She take her seat belt off. She turned the car off and take a little deep breath. She turned around and look at us. She said. Now, when we go in this store, you don't want shit, don't pick up shit, don't ask for shit. You, do you hear me? Yeah. Huh? Yes. All right. We were pre-warned before we even got in the market. <laughs> don't you look down that damn cookie aisle. Shit. You get your eyeball snatched out. My mother didn't play that shit. My mother was like one of those real mothers. She wasn't trying to be her fucking friend. She lets you know, I'm your mother. And that's that. I am not going to be your friend. I'm not going to bullshit with you. I ain't going to joke with you. I ain't going to do none of that shit with you. You are my son and you. I'm your mother. And that's where it stands. Period. Don't even crack a joke. <laughs> so I come from that old school. And right now, a lot of the kids need that, but now the course done stepped in and fucked everything up. So the kids got like all of a sudden the kids got fucking rights. Well, the kids always have fucking rights. It's just that somebody just started pushing it a little bit harder and let these motherfuckers know, hey, you know what? You can sue your mother. You know that, right? Really? Mm-hmm. It unchanged. The courts tell you what you can and what you cannot do with your child. And you got to abide by that. And I said this once before. Let me tell you. If I ever get dragged in. Well I can't do it right now. But if I ever got dragged in the court. For my kids. Because they don't want to do what they say they want to do. And and dragging me to court. And all that old kind of crazy. Like they're doing nowadays. I'm going to tell them. I said well. Hey, you know. Hey hey, dad. You know court day today right. Mm-hmm. That's right. We go in front of the judge. And I don't tell him everything. Mm-hmm. You can't do nothing to me because I'm protected by the law. All right. Well, well, let me tell you what you're doing, Pookie. Why are you in there? You get you getting dressed, right? Mm-hmm. Well, you see that suitcase over there in the corner? Put, put, put some things in there. Well, why? Just, uh, uh, uh. Put put your shit up in there, much shit as you can. You sure? Don't forget that toothbrush now. Why why I'm doing that? Just just we going on vacation. Just come load your shit up in there. We lay for court. Now we get the court and stuff. Judge gonna say, "Well, Mister Woods, I see you got we brought Pookie in. We gonna uh, go over this case. But what's what's that suitcase he got? Oh, he moving in with you." What you mean? Listen, I know what I'm here for. You're here to tell me what I can't do with him. So I figure this way, since you since since you want to regulate it and you know better than me how to raise him and 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 maybe the roof over the, I put over his head and the food that I'm giving him, maybe it's not satisfactory to you. So I just figured he can go with you. 
and you can set the rules and the guidelines. Is that what you're doing? Because if this person come home with me, he got to abide by my rules, not by yours. Now, I'm not going to kill him. Now, I understand that part of the law. I ain't going to abuse him, but damn it, I'm not going to get dragged in here because I told him to take the fucking garbage out and see he want to get an attitude. And you're going to tell me that I got to, no, I ain't got to do shit, but leave him with you. That hints the suitcase. So, some of that got to change too. And these kids know it. These kids, uh, these kids use that for an excuse. And the way the system is right now, they just they just cutting them out. The system is overcrowded with so much shit, and that they're letting these kids just like go back out on the street. They ain't got no room for them in the fucking juveniles. They just just going back out on the street and just do what you do. Don't be. Oh, I want to see you back here again. And it happens. So something has to really seriously change. And, you know, I'm really passionate about this when I talk about kids. I know I'd be talking about a whole bunch of other shit. But right now, I mean, we got an issue. We still have a problem. And before you start with that other shit, don't give me this. It's that Democrat or Republican shit. Somebody going to say something at some fucking point. Watch and see. They're not even going to pay no attention to what I'm saying right now. They're just going to just like, Whoop. It's the Democrats' fault. It's so and so's fault. We're not talking about that. I'm trying not to get into no damn politics because I know I don't really like them and you don't like them. I was talking to uh, I was talking to a few people today about my last real talk, and I was talking to my friend Linda, and she said, "You know, I just really be careful sometimes myself when, you know." Because people are so sensitive when you talk about certain things, you know, especially when it comes to, like, politics, blah, blah, blah. She said, yeah, yeah, I like that you're real talk, but, you know, just I just mean myself, you know. Just, and I said, listen, I get it. Sometimes I don't directly just talk about just politics. I just talk about common sense shit. And it's just, like, in reference to politics, it's just being about common sense. It's not that I want to just be just blatantly just talk about politics because I, because I don't. Because everybody got their own opinion of what they think or what something should be or who should be doing what and who pointing fingers at this person or this person ain't not who he is and that person not who he is. It don't matter. Both sides ain't worth a shit. How about that? So that way you can't sit and say, well, Shay, you on this side or that. No, both sides ain't shit. Politics ain't worth a shit. It's all, it's all about money. Money and power. I don't give a fuck who's in charge. Money and power. Somebody just told me today. Do you know why I'm not going to even say that? Because they're going to go into this political thing. And I don't I want to do that. I'm talking about these kids. But let me say this. I have. I have been. Blessed to be here. For a reason. I really believe that. I have so many. Young, young kids reach out to me who watch me, who got problems, who have issues. And I feel good that they can come to me and, and, and want me to talk to them and want me to mentor them, you know, and just, just listen to them. And I do. I do. You'd be surprised. I mean, since I've been doing this, I got a lot of young folks call me all the time and just say, Shane, you get it. You understand. I listen to you. And I just want you to talk to me right now. I want you to just listen to what I got to say. And I listen. And I listen. And I listen. I don't, I don't interrupt. I just let them talk. Whatever the fuck it is that's on their mind, I let them talk. I don't interrupt. I don't get judgmental and just say, wait a minute, well, this is, we're here for you to fuck it up. You know, I don't do that. These kids right now, they don't need that. They don't need nobody to talk at them. They need somebody to talk to them and listen to them and really listen. And that's part of the biggest problem nobody listening to them a lot of these kids out here crying 
crying for somebody to just like hold them and just really listen to what they got to say. But everybody's so busy with their lives and they just just don't do it. I understand if you're a parent, you got things you do, things you got to do. You got to keep food on the table. You you got to make certain the bills is paid. You got to help Pookie them with their homework. You really don't want to do it because you you got some other shit going on too. You want to get them. You want some free time. You want to talk to your friend, your girl, whoever it is. I get it. Everybody needs that time. Everybody, everybody needs that woo side moment. But your kids need you more. You have to sacrifice. You just have to make that sacrifice. Fathers, same thing with you. In case somebody come in here and say, share what about the man? On both sides. You took the time out to have them. You knew already when you laid down with your quack quack and you didn't have your Jimmy hat on. You knew. You knew what could possibly happen. You know. So don't be surprised when a woman come up to you and say, Ah, oh, Pookie, I'm pregnant. What? What you talking about? They be killing me. Why I gotta be so fucking surprised when they say, What? Pregnant? How that happen? Why are you so surprised? If you're not using nothing, why are you surprised? If you kicking it with that person, and y'all having sex, unprotected sex on top of that. And then she turns around one day and says she's pregnant. It's, the, it's time to man up right there. It ain't about what, how this happened, how could this be, none of that shit. Time to man up. That's the time to step up and say, you know what, I'm going to, if you decide you're going to do this and we're going to have this, we're we going to be parents. We dance with the devil and now we got to do what we got to do. Period. If you take that mindset from the very beginning, before you lay down with somebody, then you can, might can make a change and it could make a difference. If you know, and I said this before, if you know that's not what you want, ladies, you know if you want a baby or not. You know, because guess what? You the one who got to carry Pookie for nine months. You know, you know if you want your hourglass figure stretched out of shape right now, you know, you know you still want to go out there, hey, you know you still want to do that and wear your days at Dukes. You can't do that with your stomach sitting out there eight months. You can't do that. You know this. So here, don't let the, here's a, here's a tip for you. Don't let those guys tell you, come on, you know, they said it's, it's, I just, you know, I want to, I want to, you know, you want to feel the skin on the skin, you know, it don't feel, the, it don't feel the same if, if I put that on, you know, y'all girls heard that shit before, it don't feel the same, I, I mean, come on, I'm clean and I won't do nothing, I won't do nothing inside you, I won't, I mean, before I get to that point, I, you know, I can pull out, yeah, you know, no, no, Pookie, no, 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 come on, girls, not the same, just let me go ahead and do it, you got those guys who would do it, hey, this is what you got to do. For the most part, you know what he want. And he know what he want. Remember, he trying real hard. He trying real hard. He pulling out all the stops because he know that he know that you're ready. He know you ready. But you got the cards right now. You hold the key. You hold the key to that man's mind sexually. Because you know he wants it. And he knows he wants it. But he's trying to convince you that you don't. he don't need to wear this Jimmy hat. Well, this is where you got to be strong. It's a lesson, Boogie. And you know he wants it. He's sweating. He's sweating like a hoe in church. Boogie, if you want this, you're going to you gonna have to Jimmy up. That's that. Oh, girl, fuck, let me, then go ahead and get ready, act like you get ready to put your pants on, your clothes back on. Shit. You want to go, when you go, when you, when you reach down there and grab for your drawers, you're going to say, oh, okay, fuck it. Because he know already, because he, he ready. He going, he ready. 
you're not going to let this moment pass by. You're a man. I'm a man. I know. I've been there. Anyway. So, yeah, you, 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 have to, you have control of this because I say this all the time as well. You see all these kids out here who don't know shit. I mean, a lot of kids out here are just fucking dumb, just for no goddamn reason dumb. And it's not their fault. I'm just keeping this shit real. You know why they dumb for the most part? And do all the stupid shit because their mama's dumb and don't do and do stupid shit. They daddy dumb and do stupid shit. So guess what will happen? When you get two people together and they mate, right? And she don't know shit. He don't know shit. He ain't trying to have shit. She really ain't trying to have shit. And guess what? Those are the people when they those are the people who need to be wearing something. Mandatory. People like that need to be wearing some protection at all fucking times. Because when they get together and they have a baby, a little baby pookie, guess what's going to happen? Well, he ain't no shit. Mama didn't know shit. <sighs> they can't they can't teach their kids shit because they don't know shit. Now you got a kid who don't know shit because their parents didn't know shit. And what do most parents do nowadays? They send their kids to school to be raised. So teachers nowadays, they they can't even just fucking teach like it was back in my day. They fucking babysit. Teachers are fucking babysitters. Teachers are fucking uh, counselors. Um, teachers are psychiatrists. <laughs> teachers, teachers are mothers. Teachers are fathers. That's crazy. That's crazy. You got some kids right now when they go to school, they got a better connection in a motherly and fatherly way with their teacher other than the person at home who had them. And that's a fucking fact. That's a fact. When your child had to go somewhere else to seek some type of fucking guidance because he can't or she can't get it from home, there's the problem and there's the start of the breakdown right there. Right there. So, in short, I make time. When them young, when young folks call me, I know be, I be busy a lot of time. But when a, a young folk reach out to me with a, a problem, or they're on the edge, I'll I'll find a little time and I'll talk to them, even if I can't talk, talk long. I'll let them know, listen, I just wanted to reach out to you because you sent me your number and we were talking, you know, just give me like 30, 40 minutes. And I said, I will call you back. And I do. And I do. And when they talk, I just listen. I just listen. Just listen. And let them get it all out until they talked out. Sometimes it takes a while. And I try to give myself that time when I call back sometime. It might be 7 o'clock, 6.30. Sometime when I'm closing down at the end of the day. Or I might be almost home. And I'll sit in the driveway sometime. And I talk to different young folks who call me. And just let them talk. Just let them talk. I spend my little extra time doing that sometime. You know, and I don't mind. Because we all need somebody to talk to. We all need somebody to talk to, no matter who you are. It don't even have to be a fucking kid. It can be a fucking grown-up going through some shit, you know. We all need somebody to talk to. Sometimes we just can't talk to our own mothers. Sometimes we can't talk to our own fathers, you know. We just can't. Some We just can't sometimes. Sometimes we can't talk to our own spouse. Sometimes we got to talk to somebody else, you know, because sometimes people are just not listening sometimes. And I say this all the time. It's important to listen to people. Listen to what people have to say, especially kids, because sometimes kids sending you signals and warning signs about what could possibly happen, what direction they're going into. You have to be vigilant. You have to watch. 
And and I really believe that 15-year-old and that 16-year-old who killed that man, who was just a, 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 rear, a ride share driver, and I think they say he had two kids and a wife. Why? Why? Now, if somebody would have caught those kids early, I mean early, and just talk to them, just listen to them, just listen to them, spend a little time with them. I mean, they could have made a difference. I really believe that could have made a difference. I would love to dig into those those kids' backgrounds and, and see how they was raised. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do some research and, and find out a little bit more about them because they caught they caught them obviously. And I want to know something about their background, how they was raised, what they've been through in such a short time, in such a short time in life to make somebody want to do that. Again, at 15, 16 year old, if you're right now listening to this right now, you're like in your 50s, your 60s like me, or your 70s, then you know already what I'm going to say. You know already. During the time when we were like teenagers and preteens, we just... We couldn't even imagine doing nothing that we, the thing that we see these young kids doing now. We could never imagine no shit like that. And that's why it's so devastating to us as older folks when we watch the news and we hear some of these stories and what these fucking young people are doing. We sit here and say, damn. Mm, mm, mm. It's something about when you get older, you, you, you say, mm, mm, mm. And it happens. And it's just amazing to me. And I still don't fucking get it. I really don't. Sometime when it's night, sometimes I try to get in or be back home before bewitching hour. Because there's so much shit happening out here in the fucking streets. Don't get me wrong. This shit can happen anywhere. But you can lower your chances sometimes. If you get out of Dodge by a certain fucking time, you can lower you, you can increase your chances of, you know, maybe a survival. And that's sad to say. It is. Because when I ride home from Detroit, I live, I'm, I'm born and raised in Detroit. I love Detroit. I just don't like what Detroit has become. I just don't like what Detroit has become because I love this city. I'm born and raised here. I just seen so many fucking changes over the fucking years. There was a time that I can be walking out at 11, 12 o'clock at night. Walking to the store or just walking just a two or three miles, just walking on a nice summer night. I, I remember that. I remember that. But now, but now, I was, let me tell you, I remember I wanted to go to the gas station. And the gas station was just like right on the corner of my street. If you walk down to my house to what is I want to say Cortland and make a left. Anybody in Detroit know what I'm talking about? That marathon station that I go to to get my coffee in the morning. It's only like what seven, eight minute walk. Let me tell you, if it got nighttime and I really had this munchie for something, I I just I got a car. I wouldn't even really want to get in the car and go get something for fear that something is going to happen. I just had this fear all the fucking time that something going to happen. I mean, I thank God it didn't happen, but that was my mindset. Something going When I walk out of this fucking door, because where I'm living at, something going to happen. And that's terrible to think like that, but that's what it is. And that's what, that's what this reality has become me and Pam used to sit on the fucking couch at New Year's Eve now New Year's Eve people start shooting like you know at 12 o'clock at night you know bring the New Year in well in the hood over the years that shit doesn't change you know it's getting ready to be New Year's Eve you better have your if you're in the hood especially over there you better have your ass in by 9 nine thirty. cause guess what Pookie them start shooting early they start shooting like at 10 o'clock 10 o'clock. I mean, you're not supposed to be shooting no damn way. 10 o'clock, they started shooting. And but on 12 o'clock hit, oh my God, you think you're in fucking Beirut in my neighborhood. I mean, it's not like a fucking war zone. And we're so used to this shit, right? 12 o'clock. 
Well, when we watch TV on the couch at 10 o'clock and the shooting, and like, pop out here, pop out there. All right, we, we, we good, we good. But when 12 o'clock come, automatically we were just like, boosh. <laughs> at the same time, we would hit the fucking floor. And just not out of fear, because that was natural to do. We just laid on the floor and was watching TV and just listening to the gunshots. And watching TV. And we weren't even saying nothing about the gunshots. Like, man, I wish they would stop. No, because it was just, like, this is what they do. It was every fucking year. And so it was without fail. So we would sit there and lay on that fucking floor until like 1.30. If we still were up watching TV and stuff, it's like 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning. There's times that I remember we went in the fucking basement because it got... The shot was so bad one year, I said, you know what, this year we're going to go down in the basement because I don't want nothing flying through this damn window. Shit, we went down in that damn basement, in that cement basement down there at my house over there, and when they started lighting up, we was okay. We was down in the basement, we turned the TV on, we was like surrounded by brick wall, and like, no, nah, there's something coming through here, it got to be a miss. Somebody get us in here, it's going to have to be a fucking missile. So what I'm saying is things don't change. You just, I just think we should really work hard with these kids. I mean, especially if you got your own kids and they 12, 10, 11, 12. Spend time with your kids. You took the time out to have them. Take the time to spend with them. I know it's a lot. I know that you're stressed. I see women stressed with the kids stressed them the hell out. And I get it. Kids would do that. That's what kids do. If you're not prepared for that shit, you're not prepared to have children, don't do it. Jimmy up. I don't care what Pookie say about a feeling. Because at the end of the day, he's not going to be the one walking around with stomach all bloated out. He's not going to be the one Think about this, ladies. He's not going to be the one sitting at home changing these diapers all the time and you sitting there, the boy crying and, you know, just going through the, the shit conniption fit. You know where Pooh he's going to be? He's going to be out there doing his thing. He's looking for a new victim for the most part. He's looking for somebody else he can lay out with. The damage is done. He did his deed. Now you're off to something else and you wonder why he's not coming by. You wonder why come he can't give you no damn milk or money for milk or, or pampers. It's because of who you chose to lay down with. You made that decision. So I'm telling you girls right now, it's the art with you. Evaluate the person that you're talking to. The person that you're thinking about laying down with. This is a job application. Get him a job application and, and see what he's all about. This is a job interview. This is a job interview. Just don't just lay up with him because he got nice eyes or he, his, pat, his pants sag a certain way. No. When you choose the man, it's like a job interview. Make him earn it. Make him earn the right to be with you. Just don't give yourself up like that. Have no pride within yourself. Don't do it. It ain't that serious. So listen, that's my rant. And this, I'm surprised, actually. I talked about kids through the whole thing. Normally I'm all over the place. But tonight, I just felt like I just wanted to just talk about kids and what what they going through and the fact that you know i have a lot reach out to me all the time you know and i'm just so glad to be here and i think i'm making a difference i really do i really do because when i when a young person call me and come to me with an issue or a problem that means i'm doing my job I'm saving somebody. So that's why I do this. So every now and then, I'm going to get on here. I'm going to rant. I'm going to talk to these young kids and let them know that, hey, there are people out here who care. We do care what you're going through. We do. Don't think that we don't. If I have time, I will talk to you. I will. And I will listen to you. I will. 
because you are the future. Shay from the Shay Show Real Talk. Take care.